If you're planning on putting your game on Steam, your game better have a key binding settings menu, bro. And no, I don't mean those input map in the project settings. I mean an in-game menu that your players can use to remap the controls of your game. Don't know how to do it? Well, you're in luck because we're gonna do it together right now. Let's go though. Now, there are many types of key binding menus, but we're gonna keep it simple and do one where you can only bind keyboard and mouse and only one input per action. You can always expand on it by getting inspiration from other games. Let's create a folder for our input settings and in it a scene called input settings with the root type user interface. Now let's build out the interface by adding a panel container, then a margin container, VBox container, scroll container and another VBox container which we will name action list. You want to make sure your root node is expanded all across the screen, so in case it isn't, go into anchor presets and select full rect. Select the panel container and under anchor presets select center. You can then drag on these knobs while holding the alt key to expand the panel container to whichever size suits you. Select the margin container and under team overrides, constants, set all margins to whichever size you like, for example 8. Select the scroll container and under layout, container sizing, click on the expand checkbox and you'll see the orange box has expanded. Select the action list and also under layout and container sizing, check the expand checkbox under horizontal. Now let's add the buttons which we will use for rebinding. Add a button to the action list and call it input button, then add a margin container and an hbox container. Select the input button and under layout let's set the custom minimum size Y to something like 18 pixels. Then under focus let's set the mode to none. Then under theme overrides and styles, I'm gonna create a new normal style with a stylebox flat and set its color to a transparent black. For the hover style I'm gonna do the same thing but I'm gonna change it to a transparent white and I'm gonna drag the same style into the pressed style. Select the margin container inside the input button and set its anchor preset to full rect. And under team overrides and constants let's set some margins and these are just some values that work for the font I will be using and you can experiment with those for whichever font and whichever size of text you're gonna use. Let's add a label to our hbox container inside the button and call it label action. This will display names of the actions. The text inside it for now doesn't matter. Set its vertical alignment to center. Under mouse set the filter to pass so the label isn't going to catch any click events and it's gonna send them up to the button. Under theme overrides you can set any font and any font size you want. Let's duplicate that label and name this one label input. And this one is going to display the inputs for the actions. And just like before the text inside it doesn't matter for now. To put them on the opposite sides of the button let's add a control node and place it between them and under layout and container sizing let's check the expand to expand the horizontal space between them. We also have to go under mouse and switch the filter to pass. And that's it for our button. I'm going to right click on it and press save branches scene. So now we can go into our button scene to see the button, but it's gonna look a little weird until we switch the anchor preset to top wide. Now we can instance this scene for each action that we want to remap inside our input settings. But we will not be doing that through the editor, but instead through code, so let's hop on into the input settings script. First let's preload the input button scene, and then we're gonna get our action list from our scene tree. Let's create a is remapping variable and set it to false, an action to remap variable and set it to null, and a remapping button variable and set that to null as well. In the ready function, let's call a non-existent create action list function, which we will create right now. In the create action list function, let's first call input map dot load from project settings to load the default input settings. Then let's create a for loop to loop over action list children and call q3 on each child. Now we made sure the action list is completely empty. 
So let's add some actions into it by looping over actions in input map dot get actions. And for each action, we're going to create a var button variable and call input button scene dot instantiate to create a new button. We're gonna get the action label from the button by calling find child on the button and typing in label action because this is the name of our label. We're also gonna do that for the input label. So input label equals button dot find child label input. Let's set the action labels text to the action. Then let's get the events from input map dot action get events and pass in the action. Events are the keys that are bound to the action. We're gonna check if any event exists for this action by typing if events dot size is greater than zero and if there is an event, we're gonna set the input labels text to events at index zero dot as text. And if there isn't an event, we're just gonna set the input labels text to an empty string. And finally, we're just gonna add the button to the action list by calling action list dot add child and pass in the button. To place the input settings into the game, I just instantiated a canvas layer called GUI and inside it, I put the input settings. I set the input settings to invisible by default. Then in the world script, I get the input from the scene and I have an unhandled input function which checks for a pause key and pauses the game and shows the input settings. When I open up the menu, you can see all these actions and most of them are default in Godot. Those are the ones that start with UI. And once I scroll all the way down to the end, I can see my own actions. This obviously isn't what I want. I just want to show my own actions and at that, I don't even want to show all of these. For example, I don't want the players to be able to key bind the pause action. And also, I don't like how the action names are spelled with an underline. So we have to take a different approach. So let's create an input actions dictionary with the keys being the action names of the actions we want to rebind and the values being the text we will display for them. So only put in the actions you want to be able to rebind and make sure the keys are written down exactly how they are in the input map. Now let's go back into our create action list function and let's change out the input map dot get actions for the input actions dictionary. Now the action variable holds the keys of the dictionary and to assign our text from the values of the dictionary, we just have to change the action label dot text to equal input actions with the index action. Now this looks nicer, but you'll notice the Godot engine adds the word physical next to inputs that are made on the keyboard. Let's remove this as well. We have to edit the input label dot text line and we just have to add dot trim suffix to the end and specify the string we want to remove, which is going to be space parentheses physical. Now we're ready to add the actual remapping functionality to the buttons. At the bottom of the create action list function, let's connect the buttons pressed signal to an on input button pressed function, which we haven't created yet. And let's also call dot bind on it and pass in the button and the action. Now let's create the on input button pressed function, which will take in the mentioned button and action. First, let's check if is remapping is false, in which case we're gonna set the is remapping to true. We're gonna set the action to remap to our passed in action, and we're gonna set remapping button to our passed in button. We're gonna find the label input in the button and set its text to press key to bind. Now let's implement the input function where we'll start by checking if is remapping is true, in which case we'll also check if event is input event key or event is input event mouse button and event is pressed. So we're only gonna check for keyboard inputs and we're gonna check for mouse button inputs. Call input map dot action erase events and pass in the action to remap to remove all events from that action. Then call input map dot action add event and pass in the action to remap and our event. Then let's call the non-existent function update action list and pass in remapping button and event. Let's implement that function right away. In it, we're only gonna get the input label from the button and set its text to event dot as text dot trim suffix physical, just like before. Now we can finish up the input function by setting is remapping back to false, action to remap back to null and remapping button back to null as well. Okay, now the remapping works. For example, I'm gonna remap the interact action to F but it doesn't work as well when I remap the action to say escape because that closes the menu at the same time. 
we also have a problem when I try to remap the action to a click because the action gets remapped to the left mouse button but the button is immediately pressed again and activates remapping again. We can solve both of these issues by just calling accept event at the end of the input function. This is going to stop the event from propagating further up the tree and no other node will be able to capture it. Ok, now I can bind the left mouse button without a problem. But if I click too fast, it's gonna bind double click, which is something we do not want. So let's fix that. We're gonna turn the double click into a single click by checking if event is input event mouse button and event dot double click, in which case we're gonna set event dot double click equals false. Finally, let's create a button to reset the settings to default. Let's add a button node to the VBOX container so it sits below the scroll container. And name it reset button. Add the text reset to default. Under focus set mode to none. And add the font. Then let's switch from the inspector to the node tab and double click on the pressed signal. Click connect and you'll get this on reset button pressed function. And all we have to do inside of this is recreate our action list. So just call create action list function. And there we go, we have a functional key binding menu. Now I'm not gonna go into how to actually save these settings, which is something you would wanna do, but that's a topic for another video. Check out the playlist on screen for more short form Godot tutorials, and thank you for watching.